Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another Plant Zoo video where we're going to be going over um, the Meta Wish List, all the top 200 animals. Because, okay, a little bit of story with this. I was originally going to do 100 animals, but then I noticed the animal that was below 101, um, or like what I, how I'm doing it, which is basically excluding animals that are aquarium, aviary. Animals that don't, we don't really have mechanics for yet. And um, anyway, so I was going down, came to the last slide, and I was like, hang on, this is a cool animal. We've got to keep this in. And so I went up, I bumped it up to 150. There was another cool animal in there. And so I just ended at 200, and I was just like, okay, that's it, that's it. That's, <laughs> that's where we're going to leave it, because I don't want this video to be too long. So I'm only going to say a couple of words for each animal and as many as I can for certain animals that I don't really know too much about and just review them and um, what their what their value is to the to the game right now. I mean, the more animals, the merrier, but um, some of these species are probably not as required as, say, what's at number one. <laughs> but it, it would be great to boost our biodiversity. And so, um, oh wow, I've been talking that long. The trailer footage is um, reset there. But um, anyway, so yeah, I have I did cut a few animals out. I have included some animals that you could say if, that, if Frontier were to do it, move certain animals between exhibits and habitats. So you'll see that with a, a minimum of three. <laughs> I'll say that. Um, I haven't included the Linnaeus' two-toed sloth, but that is a highly requested animal. Even though we did get the three-toed sloth in um, the tropical pack, as you can see there, um, we many people, myself included, were wanting the two-toed sloth. So we didn't get that, and people would still like to have that one, given the familiarity to the public that that one has. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Starting off, with the lowland parker. So um, lowland parkers are a little rodent from the rainforest of South America. Um, they are nocturnal and yeah, it, it's a very peculiar looking animal, much like the agouti, capybara, and many other South American rodents. Um, this species is um, widely kept in zoos and I think even sometimes as a pet. Um, I don't know much about that, but uh, yeah, it'd be an interesting species for a few nocturnal houses. Next, we have the Satya Tragopan. Now, I had, a, I had no idea what the name for this bird was, but I had seen it before when I looked it up on Google. <laughs> and so I found that the males have this beautiful display um, where they open their neck feathers, I'm pretty sure, or it's a, or it's a bit of skin. It looks like skin, actually. And it's beautifully colored with all these blues and reds and oh that is a great color i think it's the female on the right uh on the, on the left i mean <laughs> left and right uh that you're never you're never good with it when you're older um but hey so this would be an interesting species to have and many of these species later on that are birds um many of them have very cool displays like here with the satyr tragopan Overall, it would be a fantastic species to get. Uh, here we have the South American Mustelid, the Tyra. Um, so it is arboreal and on the ground. So it moves between the trees and the ground, much like many weasels around other parts of the world. But um, it is mostly dark brown and, and black with a lighter brown head and a cream patch on the chest, much like that of a sun bear, um, but is, of course, not a bear. So this species would be interesting to get for like some sort of like the nooks and crannies of your exhibits. So like you have large spaces between exhibits, you could squeeze a few smaller species in. That's what many zoos in real life do. Um, like I know some African sections, you've got like between meerkats and uh, hammer-dry baboons, you could have this little habitat in between the rock hyraxes. Um, but yeah. Uh, uh, now we have the giant armadillo. Now this species is not widely kept in captivity, but there isn't. They are in captivity in a zoo in Brazil, I'm pretty sure. 
it's either Brazil or was it Paraguay? I think it might be Brazil, but um, yeah, they're very hard to keep. But given their presence in captivity, they are a viable candidate for the game. And since Frontier has worked out how to create an armadillo, um, we could get potentially more armadillos, and you will see a few more in this video. Uh, now we have the black crown crane. So much like the grey crown crane, they share very similar characteristics. The red tail feathers and a bit of the yellow and white wing feathers. The crown of um, yellow um, feather-like structures. Their differences are the dark grey to black of the black crown crane and the red cheeks of this black crown crane. The grey crown crane, which you'll see far later in the video, um, looks a bit different to this. The Arabian Oryx is a conservation success story, but this would be our third Oryx. And I don't think we would get the fourth because it is it does look like a, a Gemsbok very closely. But um, the Arabian Oryx would be a great species to boost a bit of um, Saudi Arabia diversity and Middle Eastern diversity. Just a bit of that there. But um, they are very distinct in their coloration, the black and white in comparison to the um, tan and black of the Gemsbok and the white and red of the Simitar Horned Oryx, so it, it does stand a chance. Now we have the giant Asian pond turtle, and this is an example of an exhibit animal that could be a habitat animal. Like these guys are pretty, pretty big, and I know I think San Diego Zoo keeps them with their with their gharials. And it would be cool to just see a little turtle swimming around in a habitat where you've got some big old gharials. I think that would be a great creative choice. Here we have the sandhill crane, a species from North America that actually migrates to the Arctic tundra. Um, I forgot about that until I rewatched Planet Earth recently. Um, but yeah, sandhill crane, given Frontier can make cranes, various species can be selected. Um, here we have another gibbon, the northern white cheek gibbon. So this species and the southern white cheek gibbon and black crested gibbon, they all look very similar. Um, are kept widely in captivity. I have seen northern white cheek gibbons in, in captivity myself at um, Taronga Zoo. They've got a pair. They're either northern or they're southern. They're one of the two. But um, this critically endangered species would be a fantastic addition to just to boost a bit of gibbon diversity. Um, um, here we have the black caiman, one of the largest crocodilians of Latin America. And um, yeah, I am a personal big fan of the black caiman. I think they're a very amazing reptile, and I'm a sucker for crocodilians, trust me. Um, there are a fair few crocodilians in this list, so people are still wanting more because Frontier is actually really good at making crocodiles and um, alligators alike, very similar. But um, yeah, black caiman would be a great addition. It is very far down the list, so I wouldn't count on it, sadly. Um, it's still a cool animal, and would love to see it maybe in Plan Zoo too, if that ever happens. Here we have the six-banded armadillo. Um, so this species can have between six to eight bands, not nine, because, well, we know what that one is. <laughs> and, like, these long hairs, like you saw with the Red River Hog in the Tropical Pack, Frontier can do these great hair details. Um, between the plates of the armadillos um, and yeah just getting a few more armadillos would be pretty good and these guys interestingly enough they can't tuck up into a ball they just dig a burrow so that's a interesting little detail that would differentiate it from the others here we have the roe deer a widely um, widely distributed um, deer species of eurasia um, yeah just a bit of diversity in deer is a great thing to have. Um, I don't really have too much to say on many of these animals, um, funny enough. Um, but roe deer would be an interesting species for like um, European wildlife park settings and just, um, yeah. <laughs> Another deer, we have the cheetle deer. Now this one I do know a bit about. Um, so they're a great hunting animal, <laughs> funny enough. Um, Deer are widely kept around the world for um, trophy hunting purposes, but um, cheetal or axis deer or spotted deer, whatever you want to call them, um, they are one of the most common. And they're also invasive in Australia, so yeah, I know what it's like. <laughs> and um, yeah, it would be a cool species to boost a bit of Indian representation because these guys are a primary prey source for Indian leopards and Bengal tigers and dolls. 
So, um, yeah, it'll be a fun addition. Jaguar Rundies are a cat I know very little about, and um, I think scientists don't really know too much about them either, because they are a very mysterious species of South America. But given their obscurity and a bit of strange um, physiology, they would be an interesting addition for a cat. And they don't really look too much like the other cats we have right now. So it does stand a chance of coming into the game, though it is very low down on the list. And our, I think that I hope this is our last armadillo. I can't remember now. But this is the Sullen Three Banded Armadillo. Now, this species is very common in captivity, um, kept all around the world. But um, yeah, it'd be a cool little addition. Uh, much smaller than Nine Banded, I'm pretty sure. But um, yeah, just seeing the diversity of armadillos as we go through is very interesting. Here we have the ringtail, or sometimes called the ringtailed cat. Now, they are not a cat. They are related to raccoons and coatis. And um, they would boost a bit of diversity for um, the Sonoran Desert and other areas of the southwest USA, as they are very widespread throughout that area. Fire-headed geese are a very exquisitely colored uh, member of the goose family. And they are most notably one of the highest flying birds in the world, going over the Himalayas in their migrations. Um, I think. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that's where I heard it. Um, they can fly. I think the, the, the highest flyer is the Rupel's Griffin Vulture, and then you got the bar-headed goose just under. I wonder where I heard that from. Um, anyway, now we move on to a couple of petting zoo animals that will start to pop up. So we've got the miniature donkey. And as I was making this, the domestic animals that are in this um, video, they would be perfect for a petting zoo pack, Minch Donkey being one of them. Um, great Blue Heron would be another great addition. I've um, recently learned of this species, relatively recently. It was about um, three years ago. <gasps> oh, bless, bless me. <laughs> Herons make you sneeze. Um, but, um, yeah. Great Blue Heron as a wading bird, spending most of its time on the ground, would be a perfect habitat animal, as we do have a few wading birds that fly in real life, but um, are able to stay on the ground in Plant Zoo. So Great Blue Heron would fall into that category. Now we have the Japanese giant salamander, the second largest um, of the salamanders, um, found in the mountain streams of Japan. Um, yeah, okay. this species would be perfectly in an exhibit like a large exhibit but would be great as a habitat animal too because of their size i think they're about two two meters long thereabouts um but uh yeah it's a very interesting species and the chinese giant salamander that we'll get to later which is higher on the list because it is the largest um would make a fantastic addition too the ribbon seal is a very obscure pick but i think there is one place in japan that keeps the ribbon seal um but they are a very distinct arctic seal and we don't have any arctic seals right now but um either way it would be an interesting addition now i know they're in endless ocean so um would be cool now we have the Nor northern luzon giant cloud rat so for those who don't know where luzon is it is in the philippines and this is an animal that's found in the rainforest of that area and they are a very interesting looking species. Like they're a very fluffy little rat. Little. It's a giant. <laughs> I think they're one of the largest rats. Um, but I think the is it the pouched rat that's the biggest? I don't know. But um this species would be interesting. Eurasian red squirrels, we don't have any squirrels. Like, why aren't more people asking for squirrels? They're an iconic species of the woodlands of the northern hemisphere, so um, getting either one of the squirrels, red squirrel, um, Douglas's squirrel, gray squirrel, any squirrel will do. Um, um, Flemish giant rabbit, another petting zoo species. Now these guys are fairly large, as you can tell by the name. And yeah, the many petting zoo animals would be fantastic. And we don't have any rabbits or hares right now, so it, it would fill a niche that's currently lacking, as they're not rodents. Um, I'll say that much. <laughs> Gentoo penguin is a um, great species. They they thrive well with king penguins in captivity. Like 
often you will find king penguins and gen twos in the same en enclosure and they're also the fastest swimming penguin in the world so fun fact of the gen 2 penguin they are the fastest the bald uakari i believe is kept at the los angeles zoo i think that's the only place outside of its native range but it, within its native range um i think there are a couple of zoos that have them and or at least bald uakari is in a captive setting and they are a very weird looking pr primate like proboscis monkey has grown on me as not being that weird <laughs> but the bald uakari is that its tail at the back <laughs> Pretty sure it's its tail but um the red face is very conspicuous but um yeah it, it'd be an interesting species as they are not common in captivity but um yeah bald uakari whoever's look, asking for it well it'll be nice to get it as they are very rare in captivity so yeah <laughs> the chinese alligator is a critically endangered species from from china's yangtze river and i think a few other areas around the river but um as rare as they are in the wild um they're actually very widespread in captivity like i think there's twenty thousand or so twelve thousand in captivity the very crocodilians are notoriously good breeders so um if you've got the right conditions um they can be successfully bred in captivity it's more the release into areas that are polluted that's a problem um because either their prey is non-existent or has been overfished or the water is just so polluted that the crocodilians simply can't survive and neither can their prey so that's m the main problems that are facing crocodilians around the world is pollution and the overfishing of their food but chinese alligator is one of the smallest crocodilians and the only other member of the alligators well, the only other alligator because came and are pretty close relatives but they are the second of two gators in the world chin strap penguins are an interesting species from many sub antarctic and i think even antarctica itself um but given their iconic look they would be a fantastic addition as more antarctic penguins and more penguins in general like there are 17 of them you've got a lot to choose from frontier and coley cattle have the biggest horns of all domestic cattle and they would certainly be an interesting addition because of their huge horns and um yeah i've seen them not in real life but in examples in some zoos where they've got them in their safari sections because of their size but um yeah it'd be an interesting species i'd love to be like going first person mode along the path you go past the barrier and just see these massive horns going by it's like what's that you get to the viewing gallery and boom it's a big old cow <laughs> um the tiger quoll is a marsupial from um eastern australia and tasmania they are the largest of the quolls also called the spotted tail quoll um but i like the tiger quoll better i've actually experienced the ferocity of one of these little guys um i lent onto an enclosure once and it um, ripped at my raincoat so uh yeah they're feisty little fellas but represent the diversity of carnivorous marsupials other than tasmanian devils so that, that would be a fantastic addition if we were to get them the wood duck is a um, very famous species from north america very widespread with those bright red eyes um, it would certainly be a great addition we need um, waterfowl and the wood duck is a great example from north america so it would be a fantastic addition abyssinian or northern ground hornbill um, is the sister species to the southern ground hornbill which is further up the list um, the differences between the two include the differently shaped cask on their heads um, so the cask is basically the crest of a hornbill and abyssinian ground hornbills can have more blue skin around their faces rather than red like a southern ground hornbill but they do share that a bit Salabese crested macaques are from the island of Sulawesi um, and are well known from the memes and just the funny pictures that are on the internet. Like I struggled to get a, a natural picture <laughs> of, of a Salabese crested macaque when it wasn't um, having fun with a camera. But um, they are an interesting species, critically endangered. Um, 
and would represent a bit of diversity in the types of old world monkeys we can get. Like, these guys have mohawks. <laughs> um, slow lorises are a group of nocturnal primates. They are not monkeys or lemurs. They're close to lemurs because they're prosimians, which are another group of primates, which includes lorises, um, potos, galagos or bush babies, and the lemurs. But there are a variety of different slow lorises we can get. I've named a couple. So we've got the pygmy slow loris, the bengal slow loris, and the sunda slow loris. That yellow is not the actual colour of the eyes. That's just a reflection from whoever's torch is shining it right in the face. <laughs> but slow lorises would be great either in the exhibit or on the ground. <laughs> like I don't know how well they are on the ground, but they're primarily arboreal. So it'd probably be better in sort of a an exhibit setting, much like the sloth, just not a walkthrough because these guys are highly venomous um, and their venom can rot flesh. So I wouldn't put them in a walkthrough exhibit. Here we have one of the most endangered animals of North America, the black-footed ferret, a specialist prairie dog hunter. Um, and we don't have any ferrets. And this is a perfect species for the game. The Visayan warty pig of the Philippines is another critically endangered species we could see. Um, there are a variety of swine that we can get in the game, and Visayan warty pigs are certainly a notable animal for the game. Um, I remember it was the Gaming Beavers Planet Zoo series. He said um, Visayan warty hog um, in one of them. He's like, where's the Visayan warty hog? Because we had warthogs at the time, and we still do. But, um, yeah, fulfill the Game of Beaver's dreams, Frontier. Give, give him the Visayan Warty hog because, um, yeah. <laughs> I won't get into much of the Game of Beaver stuff. I watch his videos all the time. He's a great YouTuber. Um, has done a bit of plant too in the past. But, um, anyway, Visayan Warty Pig, great addition in the making. Lesser mouse deer are one of the smallest of the deer family also called chevrotains. I would personally go the greater mouse deer, not because it's greater, but um, it has more distinct coloration. Um, but th this guy shares a feature with two other deer later on, um, which you'll know very soon with one of the species. Um, so here we have the greater bilby, um, the, often called Australia's Easter bunny, because we don't have rabbits as a native animal. It's more of a feral situation so bilbies are basically our version of the easter bunny and it's honestly i find i find bilbies actually cuter than rabbits um personally but that's just me <laughs> no one cares what i think <laughs> but um yeah it'd be a fantastic addition making use of the burrows and would be a great species to represent the nocturnal life of australia uh, marsh deer are one of the only deer species in south america and it would be great for sort of swampland areas in our South American sections as just a bit of diversity. And I believe there are a few zoos that have marsh deer. Radiator tortoise. Almost hurt this one isn't higher up because look at the beautiful radiating stripes from um, the center of their scoots. Like that is awesome. Uh, they are critically endangered from Madagascar. And I would love to have the radiator tortoise. They are probably my favorite tortoise. Although I do love Galapagos giant tortoises. So I think Galap's come in at first and then radiator tortoises at second because of the beautiful colours. But um, I would love to see the radiator tortoise at some point. Um, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> More Madagascan animals is what we need and tortoises are one of the only other species that are kept in captivity on, from Madagascar. But there are a couple others like a few different species of lima, bonseras, um and a couple of others like chameleons and tenrex. But other than that, radiator tortoise would be would be great to see. South American tapir is would be our third species of tapir. Um, there are is it five? But only four are kept in captivity. South American tapirs are a species I would imagine better with capybaras than a bear's tapir because South American tapirs often coexist with capybaras. I don't know how often a bear's tapir would because bear's tapirs are more rainforest, whereas the South American tapirs or lowland tapirs are better equipped for a more wetland lifestyle. 
But hey, that's just me. It'll be a fun addition nonetheless. Harbour seals are another um, species of true seal, very similar to the grey seal in basic appearance. But um, just to boost a bit of diversity, harbour seal would be a fantastic choice. Um, the sable is a small weasel from Europe, I think. Is it Europe or North America? Let's see if Google can answer this question. <laughs> sable. Um, it is Eurasia. Okay. So, oh, it's mostly Asia. Okay. Learn something new every day. Sables. I think that would be great for Eastern Asian sections. Perfect. Uh, um, next, we have the Francois Langer of um, Southeast Asia. And, um, yeah, I've seen these guys in real life, and they're very fun to see. Like, you got the dark adults with the white, is it like sideburns? White, white sideburns and the bright orange babies. Yeah, Langers are one of the only Old World monkeys that we're currently lacking, other than the obvious baboons. But Francois Langer would be a, a cer certainly a great choice for a Langer species. Here we have the European rabbit. Um, interesting story with these guys. Um, the Iberian lynx was going to be originally in this video until um, I added back some of the exhibit animals. But um, the European rabbit is a key contributor to the Iberian lynx's decline because they're invasive everywhere else. And in their native range, the native the natural predators and people are causing their uh, decline there. So European rabbits are actually declining in their native range, but are doing very well in their feral homelands. Um, and that has reduced the Iberian lynx population because there's not enough rabbits to feed them. So I thought I'd just share that. But um, European rabbits, certainly not my first choice for a rabbit in Planet Zoo. Flemish giant rabbit would be more my speed with that. Persian onagers are another species of ass. Um, so much like the Somali wild ass, these guys have a very similar look. And you can see that dark dot um, around, is it their ankle? It's around their ankle or their knee. Um, horse physiology isn't my specialty, but um, I know they have one toe. <laughs> but given we have the Somali wild ass, a Persian onager would be pretty easy to whip up. Um, at least in my opinion. And... Whether it's worth it or not, um, that's up to you. <laughs> but Persian Oranger would be an interesting addition because I've seen these guys in real life and they're, they're a nice species to see in the zoo, just a bit of change of pace. <laughs> that would represent Western Asia a bit better too. Cuban crocodiles are probably one of my favourites. False Gary always comes in at number one for me because they, are, they, they look cool. But Cuban crocodiles are really close um, to top because. One, they're critically endangered. They're only populations um, remaining in the Zapata Swamp and I think another location. But they're slowly being bred out because of crossbreeding because uh, due to mixing with American crocodiles uh, and um, being hunted and loss of habitat and food. But the main thing that would win the Cuban crocodile place in Plant Zoo is their ability to gallop. Now, this would be awesome to see them go around as, just when they're in a hurry, you just see them gallop along. That would be a fun um, little thing for this crocodilian to differentiate, differentiate itself from the others. But, um, yeah, Cuban crocodiles are one of my favourites, so it would be great to see this one. Impala are an iconic site of the African savanna and a, a chief food source of the African leopard. And you often see these guys on safaris. I've never been to Africa, so I can't really say for sure, but I've seen them a lot in nature documentaries and videos of people going to Africa. Um, Africa's on my bucket list. I really need to get myself over there at some point. But um, impalas are one species you are likely to come across, depending on where you go, but um, primarily in East and Southern Africa, you will see impala. Vicuñas are a wild relative of the llama and alpaca with a distinct um, fluffy chest um, that gives them a unique look from the front. So you've got like a little bit of a fluffy um, chest there. And yeah, it'd just be an interesting species to boost a bit of diversity in the Andes, which currently lacks a couple of animals because all we've got is the llama. But um, Vicuñas would be an interesting species to boost a bit of diversity. 
South African spring hairs, I can't really say too much about. As um, when I was going through the wish list, I, I came upon this one. I was just like, what's that? I thought it was going to be a rabbit, but then I see this guy, and I kind of do recognize them. Um, I think I've seen them once before in a, in a picture. But um, given their look, they are very unique. So they would make a fantastic, diverse choice. And their long tail would certainly look fun when they hop. Asiatic lions. Um, we do have the West African lion right now, which isn't in captivity, by the way. So, uh, <laughs> But Asiatic lions are an endangered species from India, where they only reside in the Gur Forest National Park. Is it Gur or Gir? Um, either way. <laughs> but they are the only lions in Asia and outside of Africa, because they used to range... Lions used to range outside of Africa into southern Europe and into Asia. But over time, competition with tigers probably drove them to sort of a decline and competition with people too. But um, Asiatic lion would be a fun addition for Frontier to give the lion another crack if they're not going to remodel animals that have already um, been released for years. And given the Malayan tapirs, current state of it not being remodeled since the Southeast Asia Animal Pack, I wouldn't count on the lion getting a look. So if we were to get another lion, Asiatic lion would be at the top of the list. Here we go. So Siberian musk deer are very well um, distinct from other deer, other than the Chinese water deer, because males, instead of growing antlers, they actually grow these large saber fangs. Well, they're actually tusks, but... Um, yeah, it's certainly an, an interesting look for a deer. It's a herbivore, but they have these large saber, saber tusks, which are actually teeth. So, um, yeah, it, it would certainly be an interesting species, and it shares this characteristic with the lesser mouse deer and the Reeves Muntjac later. The Kakapo, though it isn't really kept in captivity in New Zealand, it can be successfully housed. And it's only here because kakapos don't fly. They are the only flightless parrot in the world. So they could only really exist as a, as a habitat animal in Plant Zoo. And given their unique appearance, I would say the kakapo stands a good chance at possibly coming into the game at some point. Lace monitors, or what we like to call them here, goannas. Um, I, I always call them lace monitors because I'm technical. <laughs> But I, I see these guys all the time, and they are a beautiful-looking lizard. And given how well Frontier made the Asian water monitor, lace monitor would certainly be a fantastic piece of work. Um, and would boost Australia's reptile roster a bit with another habitat reptile. But there is an even larger lizard coming up that would make a far greater addition for many people. The Reeves pheasant, um, it, this, this species I actually forgot what it looked like when I came up, up to this slide. And after looking at it, it's got beautifully long tail feathers. And that's what I've noticed with many of the birds in this selection. Um, many of them have really interesting displays. And that would certainly be great to see in Plant Zoo for um, many different reasons, just seeing them do their thing. Whooping cranes are a species of, from North America, and um, yeah, they, they, they have interesting conservation relevance, so they would be a cool addition. Now that we're going on 32 minutes, I kind of want to speed this up and just say the names. So next we have the Himalayan Manal, the Guanaco, the Lowland Anoa, the Dalmatian Pelican, which is actually the largest pelican. Tartus monkey, the blackback jackal, I would argue this species be added because they've got a very cool coloration and are very vibrant in their colours too. The Canada goose, the false garrel, my boy, <laughs> um, the common genet, the Himalayan tar, the Barbary macaque, the only macaque outside of Asia and in Africa, in the Atlas Mountains, and an introduced population in Spain. The Victoria Crowned Pigeon. I, I usually see these guys on the ground in images from zoos, so it doesn't have to be an Avery species. 
Um, the yellow footed rock wallaby. The saddle billed stork. The black cap squirrel monkey, the species I'm mostly familiar with. The common squirrel monkey is what most people want, but um, I'm more familiar with this black capped or Bolivian squirrel monkey. The white faced saki. The numbat, which is, fun fact, the closest living relative to the extinct thylacine or Tasmanian tiger. So there's your bit of uh, Australian animal news there. Nigerian dwarf goat, another great species for petting zoos. Common eland, one of the largest antelope. Um, silver pheasants, another beautiful looking bird from a Asia. Yeah, look at that red face. It's very, very distinct. Um, the Cape porcupine. Okay, this guy does look very similar to the African crested porcupine, but there are a couple of different, there is at least one difference. The brown head is a is a bit of a difference, um, but funny enough, they actually have a white patch on their tail, which is what many people use to differentiate Cape porcupines and African crested porcupines. Can't say the same for another species coming up, but um, when we get to it, I'll see if I can spot the difference. Western Capricale, now this is a species I would really love to see due to their display and unique calls. I'd love to hear that, like, drumming um, beat go, go through the forest. Yeah, that'd be fun to hear. The Southern Pudu, one of the smallest deer species and found in the cloud forests of the Andes. Cliff Springers, very adept climbers on coffee rocks and um, cliffs in Africa. The Lady Amherst Pheasant. The Grey Fox. The Wisent or European Bison. Now this is a bison that would be more likely to be housed with trees rather than without because the bison we have currently is the American Plains Bison specifically. So not the Wood Bison which is the species you would usually see at Yellowstone. But Wisent, given their conservation successes being reintroduced to the UK, um, it would certainly be an interesting addition. Fishing cats, this is one of my personal favourite cat species because they could they have the potential for a great enrichment item like a fishing pool for a fishing cat. Scottish Highland cattle, um, a great species for a petting zoo pack if we were to get one. Chacoan peccaries. Olive baboon. Prehensile tailed porcupine. The Azara Zaguti, another bizarre rodent from South America. The Bobcat, a relative of the Lynx. The South Island Takahi, a species from New Zealand um, with a distinct red bill. The Lion tailed Macaque of India. The Quokka of Australia, often called the happiest animal in the world because of their um, unusual smile that their mouth has. The white-tailed deer, an iconic species of North America. The banded mongoose, basically a meerkat alternative, which these guys actually do hang out with warthogs. Eastern wild turkeys. The white stork. The brown pelican. We need a pelican and this guy would be perfect. The rock hyrax. The occulated turkey. I personally don't really want this one. Like, it looks like it's got chicken pox. <laughs> or should I say turkey pox? But um, it's interesting. Like, it, it's interesting how evolution for birds like these, like ground fowl, they make them look like this simply because they want to be impressive to potential mates. Like, the, the hefty um, tail feathers and just these bizarre appearances on the birds is all just for decoration rather than advantage in natural selection. So it is interesting when it, when you think about it. The red shank duke langer. The alpine marmot. The Maasai giraffe. The mouflon. The North American river otter found widely in North America's wetlands and waterways. The Nilgai, Austra uh, Australia's, Asia's largest antelope. Um, the Japanese Sarau. 
the northern elephant seal, which is found along the west coast of North America. So um, we could get an elephant seal after all and see these awesome fights in Planet Zoo. The yellow-throated marten, the gower, the largest bovine in the world, the grevy zebra, the emperor tamarin, has the Lorax run for a money? What what the hell would I say? <laughs> Gives the Lorax a run for his money. That's that's the line that I was going for. <laughs> Snowshoe hare. That one I would actually like to see that one. <laughs> Hawaiian goose or nene. The wild yak. Domestic yak would probably be a better choice because wild yaks I don't think are even kept in captivity. But, um, yeah, hadn't stopped them before. <laughs> African civet. The bat-eared fox. The giant eland. The mountain goat. This, this species would be fantastic. Indian crested porcupine. Okay, this one. Um, what's its difference with the African crested porcupine and the Cape porcupine? I, mean, I see more brown quills than black quills. So maybe that's a bit of a difference. It's got a few more brown hairs than the other two. That could be the difference. I don't know, though. Other than geographic range, uh, visually, it's not too different other than the um, brown. That's all I can say for that. Um, the black swan species widely um, distributed around Australia. Um, yeah, I've I've been charged by one of these before, and when a swan gets mad, you know it. Um, the coyote. Austra um, why do I keep saying Australia? North America. North America's most adaptable mammal because they live in all sorts of environments. The largest salamander, the Chinese giant salamander, the American flamingo, the aardwolf. The kinkajou, the mallard, is actually a surprisingly high flyer. I learnt that today. <laughs> the greater roadrunner, would have loved to see this guy in the arid pack. African leopard. Reeves muntjac, you can see there you've got the fang-like tusks. The common marmoset. The Sumatran tiger. Please, Frontier, I would love to see another tiger, especially if it looked like this. This would be perfect. <laughs> the Debrazas monkey. The Sumatran rhinoceros. Now, before you say anything, Sumatran rhinos have actually successfully been kept and bred in captivity, so they are a viable candidate for Planet Zoo if they were to be added. The Parenti, Australia's largest lizard. The bighorn sheep. The golden snub nosed monkey, the white nosed kawati, the Virginia opossum, the North American porcupine, the eye eye, really cool species I would love to see. Most people don't like them because they think they're ugly, but I think it's very interesting. Look, look at those bright orange eyes. <laughs> the cotton top tamarind. The Southern Rockhopper Penguin. The Kirk's Dick Dick. The Pear of David's Deer. The Bush Dog. The Common Squirrel Monkey. The Moot Swan. The Golden Pheasant. The Mandarin Duck. Two beautiful species from Asia. Uh, and the Wapiti or Elk. The alligator snapping turtle. The southern ground hornbill. You can see the difference there between it and the northern. Although it has a bit of blue there. Maybe it is just the cask on the head. <laughs> the raccoon dog. The helmeted guinea fowl. The little blue penguin. The world's smallest penguin. The greater kudu, one of the largest antelope and with Certainly be a great addition to the game. Like, look at that magnificent beast. The African Spurred Tortoise, the world's third largest tortoise. The Geranook. The Marabou Stork. 
the serval, the blackback antelope of India, and I think Pakistan has a couple. I believe so. Um, the palace's cat, often called the grumpiest cat because they just don't look happy. <laughs> the wild boar, the matchkey's tree kangaroo, the scarlet ibis, the Nile crocodile, the roseate spoonbill, the cockerel's safaka, the sloth bear, collared peccary, saiga antelope, sea otter, Patagonian mara, the honey badger, the southern tamandua, the mantle jeriza, the gelada, the North American black bear, the great white pelican, the markhor, the ocelot, the greater rhea, the golden lion tamarind, the muskox, the grey crown crane. You can see the difference there between it and the black crown crane if you've gotten this far in the video. <laughs> The Joffroy spider monkey, the short big echidna, the spectacled bear, the tarkin, the shoebill, the walrus, the hammer drives baboon, the black howler monkey, North Island brown kiwi, Goodfellows tree kangaroo. And the final three, the South American Kawati. Oh, now the final three. Secretary Bird, Wolverine, and the Tasmanian Devil. And, yep, that is all. 200 animals on the Meta Wish list. Well, it's not all the animals on the Meta Wish list, but it's the 200. So that is the 200 animals that people still want to see. I could reorder that list a few few times. Um, there are certainly a few species I would um, flip around in many cases because you've got a lot of interesting species behind many of these um, somewhat basic and repetitive species, but the votes just um, put it up. That's one of the main gripes I have with the meta wish list is that the votes count more than the value the animal would actually have in the game. Because some people can forget those animals um, a few times. So animals like the ringtail, that would be interesting to have. And several other species that were further down than they probably should have been. Because they are very valuable animals to have in zoos because they are very different to many of the current species we currently have. But um, let me know what you thought of this overly long video to say the least. But there are a lot of hours to get through. I probably should have just left it at 100. Um, but um, if what what is your opinion on the meta wish list? And at least give me a, a top 10. What is your top 10 most requested animal for Plant Zoo? If I were to sum mine up, I'd probably say pretty much the top 10 that was here. <laughs> like Tasmanian Devil is always going to be number one. I'd probably be a sucker and put the false gal real higher. But um, I agree with most of these animals on and their ranking on this list. Well, their position. It's not really a ranking situation. But uh, yeah, that is the meta wish list of Plant Zoo. 200 of its um, fantastic animals that could still come to this fantastic game. Um, yeah, so you can see the African crest of porcupine there. <laughs> we got one already. We don't need the other two, really. Um, but yeah, that's all for this video, and I will see you in the next one. I'm going to go have a rest. Bye-bye.